special topics, but going to go away from with information about things that are right on, in your face out on the street, but we have hardly talked about it. Amen? So we will be, for this period, a series of things, a series of weeks. Now let me go back a little bit and talk about city, uh, youth, youth and young adult. Yesterday I had a, an interview with a, a young man that we want to bring on board to help us jumpstart a youth ministry. And I want to say this to the church that it is absolutely by faith. So please join us to pray. Amen. Amen. It's a cash 22. If we say we don't have the means to employ somebody to help us with what we cannot do or we are not able to do at this time, we say with the, the idea is how do we fund it? How do we pay him? But the thing is, if you don't move up, if we, if we don't take those steps, our children are going to grow and they're going to outgrow our children's church. So where do they go to? If you know what I mean. And there are a lot of other young people in the community that want to be part of uh, part of us. There has to be, we have to be able to set the stage for them to, to come. So I'm going to encourage us, if we can, putting it very bluntly, if we can uh, be faithful in our tithing and in our giving as we've been doing, and even trust God to stretch it a little further, we will get ourselves taken care of. Amen? Amen. You know, it's just like saying, I don't have the means to go there, but if you don't go there, you're going to remain at the same level. We don't want to remain at the same level. We want to get forward. Mm -hmm. Amen? It takes some money to get us from this point to that point. And when we get to that point, money will no longer be a problem. The more, the merrier. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is what I'm going to... Uh, plead with us to do, to please be faithful in your tithing, 10% uh, of whatever the Lord blesses you with, we all do it, and in your giving as the Lord leads you, be faithful. So when we put all that together, we pay uh, for the, the expenses that we cannot do without rent and everything, then we have a little bit to give to, you know, support. It's a part-time position. You can't get it for free. But the goal is when we have a, such a person coming, he will stay with us for a given period of time mm -hmm. and then raise the young people that are coming to us and then we transition to one of us leading the team, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. So that is the plan. But to get us from there, we need to kind of push a little bit. May the Lord bless you. Amen? Amen. So give me the prayers and that the Lord shall uh, bless us. And then at the end of the month, we have the... <clears throat> friends service, Friends Sunday, at the end of the month. So please, I have emailed this out to everyone at the end of the month. I believe if you have not received it, please send me an email and I'll send it back to you. At the end of the month, please send this out to a friend. Invite a friend to church, a family. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, but during the course of these hot topics, you're going to see why it is necessary to invite people to where the real Word of God is taught. Amen. And I can say that confidently because if it wasn't true Word that has been taught here, you wouldn't be here. You know the truth. You love the truth. And nobody has come to say, Pastor, what you're saying is outside the Bible. So, so I think we, are, we hold each other, you know, balancing each other out. The truth is here. The ministers and music minister truth as well as whoever has spoken here, even sharing a testimony. Jane, Mike, Sister Donna, Flora, everybody who has been sharing at one time or the other, we've all been sharing God's word. Amen? So please bring a friend. If you walk toward it right now, by the end of the month, you will be ready. Amen? Amen. Then finally, I want to talk about Mother's Day. Mother's Day is the 10th of May. And uh, I invited, I have invited a few people, Mama Laura, I told her that you should tell the ladies, to, the girls to bring her. Please bring, uh, invite a mother. You understand? Mm -hmm. Invite somebody, a neighbor of yours. Alright? Say you have to come and we're going to have refreshment mm -hmm. both days. So, Sister Donna and the ladies will help to coordinate us. For friend service, we're going to have refreshment 
and Mother's Day we're going to have some refreshment. You know, either potluck or whatever, however you organize us, we will follow. All right? Praise God. Hallelujah. And also, if you have any, any friend you are inviting that has a problem, he says, I, I speak Spanish, I don't speak, I don't, my English is not good enough. Tell the person that we have Spanish translation at church. Praise God. Amen. We have Spanish speaking people here. All right. And if they speak Arabic, we have. In whatever language they speak, we will find a translator. It's very easy. So there's no language that we won't find in Milton. Praise, you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. And anybody that you invite that says, I don't have a way to go, I need transportation, let us know. Hi. Call me, call one of us and say we need to pick. Either of us can just dash down to wherever. We didn't know in 10 minutes you are at the end of Milton. To pick somebody up and bring to church. Praise God. Praise Hallelujah. God. Heavenly Father, in your presence we have come and we want to enjoy you. So Lord, we release our hearts to you that you will speak to us and let your name be glorified in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good. Amen. Praise God. Now, our vision is still the same. Our vision is to equip one another with the Word of God so that we can reflect or replicate God's love, life, and power in our world. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is what? Power. Hallelujah. What you know, what you don't know can hurt you. When you have knowledge, you have power. Praise God. So we're going to talk about these hot topics from this week and on until we touch, we go as far as the Lord will lead us and maybe we can put it on hold and, and you know, change. We just follow the Spirit of God. Amen? So what does the Bible say about Satan, about hell, doctrines of demons, about rapture, about the end of the world, about abortion, about homosexuality, New Age religion, denial of the existence of God, and the rest. What does the Bible say about it? Every day you go to work, wherever you turn, you're going to find this confronting you. At the store, in the news, in your newspaper, wherever, however, you're going to find things. But you see, the truth is, we do not want to wait to be told these things from the outside world. We want to get the get God's view, the Bible view, the Christian view. Amen. So that when your children come back from school and they ask you a funny question, you'll be prepared. Amen. If you know what I mean. You'll be prepared to answer. Like the letter of Peter said, so that you'll be prepared to answer anybody that asks Amen. you. Praise God. Amen. 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 So today we're going to start with the history of Satan. Where did he come from? Now let me say this. I know some of us, this is not new. But I'm going to say the reason why I'm going into what, it, what sounds to be too familiar is because there is a group of people pushing and pushing people to believe that the existence of Satan is a myth. Books have been written. Highly educated people go into debate, debates to disprove the existence of Satan. They say Satan exists only in the mind of those who believe. He does. Alright? So in other words, if they don't believe there is Satan, some, this is another funny thing that we should, you know, just consider. Some don't believe in the existence, some, some don't believe in the existence of God, but they believe that there is Satan. If you know what I mean. Is that not funny? If you don't believe God exists and you believe there is Satan, something is wrong with your thinking. Who is, is it the egg before the chicken or chicken before the egg? I don't know, if you know what I mean. But even with God and Satan, it does, it's not about the chicken and the egg at all. It's like you is apart. And I'm going to have somebody help us read the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 12 to 15. If you are there, you could help us read. Okay, Isaiah 12. 
Uh -huh. How art thou fallen from heaven, O day star? Uh -huh. the son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, that didst lay low the nations, and thou didst in thy heart, thou said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my, my throne above the stars of God, I will sit upon the mountain of congregation, in the uttermost part of the north. That's right. Amen. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Oh, yes. I will make myself like the most high. Mm. Yet thou shalt be brought down to Shural, to the utmost part of the pit. And everyone there will stare at you and ask, Can this be the one who shook the earth and the kingdoms of the world? Is this the one who destroyed? the world and made it into a wilderness? Is this the king who, dis who demolished the world's greatest cities and had no mercy on his prisoners? I added just a few verses back. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. That is talking about Satan. Now, let me give us a preamble. The book of John chapter 1. Anybody there? Gospel of John chapter 1. In the beginning was the world. Gospel of John chapter 1. Please note that. This is the beginning. This is the, the, how do I put it? This is what you, is the, the underlying scripture that we are going to look into on this topic. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. All right? All things were made by Him. And without him was not anything made that was made. All things were made by him. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. That's what the Bible says. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. All things were made by him. John chapter 1. Without him was not anything made that was made. Angel angelic talking about the, those that are sent on errands as an evangelist that that word evangelist co comes from that root greek word too that that means a messenger if you know what i mean so the word angel is not given from heaven is human language it literally means a messenger okay now there are angels in heaven and now there's another teaching going on that angels were made the same day that God created the world. But if you look at the book of Job properly, you discover that, please read the bulletin carefully, step by step. If you, you know, when, when you get home, if you look at the book of Job, the Bible says when God created the world, the angels rejoiced. So from those a few scriptures there, we are made to understand, we can conclude that the God created all the hosts of heaven first before he made the world, if you know what I mean. Now when he made the world, he made the world just for human beings, not for spirits to live in legally. He made the world for you and I to live in. That is why the earth happened to be the only star in the galaxy, if you call them stars sometimes, the planet, that has the temperature that the earth has so as to be able to help preserve the kind of life that you and I have and plants and animals do have. All right? Now, uh, in heaven, Bible says in the book of Ezekiel that we may not read today because it's a long scripture. An angel called Lucifer was made so beautifully. It wasn't the only beautiful thing made. Other ones are made. And, uh, now let me say this, let me backtrack and say Every angel that was created is secondary to a human being. So we don't worship angels. Neither should you be surprised if an angel shows up at your door. You are not anything special. You are not, it doesn't, the fact, what I'm trying to say is that the fact that an angel showed up doesn't make you more special than you, you already are. That's what I'm trying to say. Does that make sense? Hello? There are Christians that used to share testimonies of how they saw angels of God. Angels should share testimonies of random errands for you. Because you and I, as Christians, 
are superior to angels and even whether we are not Christians at all, every human being is superior to an angel, whether saved or unsaved. The reason is, God, Bible says in the book of Genesis, that God created man after his own image and his likeness. Bible did not say God created angels after his likeness or after his image. All right? Now, so when the angels were made, they were made to be God's servants. They are the Aaron people in heaven. And Lucifer called, the, the meaning of Lucifer is called the light bearer. The light bearer. And it is from that word that the Buddhists coined the term enlightenment. Because they consider the, the Buddhism, they consider that when you get, and get to a certain level, you become enlightened. You know, uh, how do you, Nirvana or Nirvana, Nirvana, whatever, Nirvana. Okay, good. I don't know the pronunciation well. Thank you. So that is when, when you get to that level, you you are you you become the enlightened one. So Satan is called Lucifer. His name is also the adversary. Adversary means the opposer. The word adversary is actually coined from a German word. All right. Now. There is also the serpent, which is called the serpent, and the old serpent. Excuse me, why was he called the old serpent? It was called the old serpent because Bible calls of the, the craftiness that he displayed in the garden. Now let me backtrack in the book of Ezekiel. You're going to read where the Bible says, can we read it together? Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 12 to 19, anybody there? Son of man, Son of man, take up a lament concerning the king of Tyre. That's and right. Say to him, mm -hmm. this is what the sovereign Lord says. This is what God is saying, yeah? You were the model of perfection, mm -hmm. full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Uh -huh. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Uh -huh. Every precious stone adorned you, ruby, topaz, and emerald, chrysolite, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and beryl. Yeah. Your settings and mountings were made of gold on the day you were created. Listen, he said from the day you were created. Right. So Satan is not eternal. It's not like God. He doesn't share God's nature. Okay. Right. So Satan is not eternal. It's not like God. He doesn't share right, God's go nature. Ahead, you were anointed as a guardian cherub. Anointed. Okay, let me hold on again. When the word anointing comes, what it means is you were empowered and placed in a position. Does that make sense? The purpose of the anointing is for empowerment. You were empowered. You were equipped and placed in a position by the person who created, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, please. For so I ordained you. For so I ordained you. Oh, I like that. So there's, there's ample... Even in a very short passage, you can see ample samples of the fact that mm -hmm. Satan is not what the secular world is trying to sell to our children. Mm -hmm. He is not eternal. He was created. Mm -hmm. Every gift, every material with which he was made was given to him by his creator. Mm -hmm. And he was assigned a position and equipped with the potential mm -hmm. to function in that position. That is what the Bible calls anointing. Go ahead, man. You were on a holy mound of God. Yeah. And you walked among the fiery stones. That's right. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created. You were blameless. You were perfect. You were blameless from the day you were created, yes? Till wickedness was found in you. Okay. Till sin, wickedness was found in you, yeah? Through your widespread trade, mm -hmm. you were filled with violence and you sinned. Mm -hmm. So I drove you in disgrace from the mound of God, mm -hmm. and I expelled you, O guardian cherub, mm -hmm. from among the fiery stones. Did you see you called him the guardian cherub? Mm -hmm. Okay, from the fiery stones. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty, and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. Yeah. I made a spectacle of you before kings, mm -hmm. but your many sins and dishonest trade 
you have desecrated your sanctuary. That's right. So I made a fire come out from you, yeah. and it consumed you. Uh -huh. And I reduced you to ashes on the ground uh -huh. in the sight of all who were watching. Uh -huh. All the nations who knew you, all appalled at you, are appalled at you. You have come to a horrible end and will be no more. That's right. If you read it there, the Bible uses a physical king called the king of Tyre. Some Bible scholars call that a metaphor, metaphorically speaking. Other people said, other scholars said that it is the uh, influence of the demonic, uh, the, the influence of Satan in the human kingdom. So that human king, as a puppet called Tyre, became so much, you know, was so used by Satan that he exhibited all the characteristics of the full nature of Satan. Whatever it is, the true idea of Satan is described there. Praise God. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. So that is the beginning. How God created him. And the Bible made us to understand that he was beautiful from the beginning. And there were, the Bible also says that every pipe, every musical instrument was built into him. Now let me say something. The Bible says the gift of God is without repentance. So God, when he gives you a gift, he doesn't take it back. He doesn't give you a gift and say, well, because you are so faithful to me, I give it to you. And when you are no longer playing ball with me, I collect my gift. God is not a child. You know what I'm saying? He can afford to let you go with it. He is rich enough. So when he gave Satan those gifts, he did not take them back, even when Satan rebelled. Now there's also, I'm surprised to discover also, very highly educated people and teachers of the Bible saying that God and Satan fought. It is not true. When the Bible says, I drove you, God does not literally, a king doesn't fight his subject. There's a problem with that, if you know what I mean. A king gives orders, and his orders are executed. All right? Now, can you turn over to the book of Revelation, chapter 12? 